Have you ever watched a show and thought to yourself, what just happened? Maybe the story was all over the place, or nothing made sense, or worse, it didn't even have a satisfying conclusion. Now what if I told you that there's a comedy that does all three, and is still one of the funniest shows on television? Well, let me introduce to you Mike Tyson Mysteries. The show stars Mike Tyson as a fictional version of himself and a lovable nitwit. It's an old IBM computer punch card. It's written in binary. Oh, for deaf people. His adopted daughter, Young He, the voice of reason. Well, it's still Hawaii and I, for one, am ready to get laid. A flamboyant ghost of John Douglas, the ninth Marcus of Queensbury and the father of modern day boxing. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be joining us in the kingdom of heaven because you're gay. You'll be going to hell. Okay, well, I'll be sure to say hi to your mom when I get there. Face. And my favorite character, the obnoxious, alcoholic, and crude talking pigeon. Well, you gotta take off all your clothes. Then, you let me take a bunch of pictures of you. Then, we put them on the internet. Put them on a, a, a pay site, though, you know? And we really play up the Asian angle. Together, the four make up the Mike Tyson mystery gang. And every episode follows the team trying to solve a challenging mystery to help people. Hey guys, every one of them has a message from someone that needs the help solving the mystery. Episodes are only 10 minutes long and use an animation style akin to shows like The Funky Phantom and Scooby-Doo. <laughs> but don't be fooled, Mike Tyson Mysteries is not a show meant for children. There are some seriously heavy hitting themes that are only meant to be viewed by adults. Starting to notice the girls, huh? <laughs> Let me ask you something. You jacking off yet? Because if you are, it's weird. Nobody does it, you're the only one. <laughs> the show ultimately feels pointless but still hilarious as it definitely blends an offbeat style of humor with incredibly skewed and unpredictable storylines. Damn! So how does the show manage to pull this off and what gives the episodes their charm? It's a mystery that's puzzled me for a while but what better way to learn how to solve it than to use the methodologies from the very master himself. Well normally what we do when we take on a new mystery is hear about a mystery which we just did so we can check that off the list. Then we shift into our period of reflection, which you just got a little taste of when we got quiet. And it was like, who's going to talk next? And that period could last anywhere from a few minutes to a few days. What's your mystery again? The crux of the show lies within its diversity of bizarre mysteries, which range from solving problems of the supernatural kind. I'm the demon bath hog. Come forth and admire my nine penises. <laughs> To helping notable figures and celebrities. Michael? Hey, Neil. Everyone, this is my brother, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And tackling some of the most complicated issues in the history of mankind. So you want us to pick a f***ing turkey? Fine. That one. Or that one. Or that. Or any one. They're all the f***ing same. The mysteries in the show are inherently bizarre by nature, and most of them have little to no desire of making much sense. I don't get it. What's the mystery? There's no real point to them, no deeper meaning or thought-provoking revelation. Mysteries? Well, that's gotta be interesting. Nope. They're just there as a plot device to keep the story going. Beep beep to the mystery mobile. But what gives the mysteries their charm is their unpredictability, because episodes are heavily reliant on misdirection to always keep you guessing as to where the story is going to go. Marcus, is that a suicide vest? Uh, yeah, I got it when I was kidnapped. Sometimes even taking the time to set up one mystery before dropping it for a different one altogether. I changed my mind. I like the first mystery better. This one has too many moving parts. One dude wants us to get rent money. Some other dude wants us to go to the end of the universe. In a strange way, this reminds me of the classic movie Psycho, which starts off as a story about a mild man and woman who becomes a thief in order to pay off their partner's debts. I swear to pay off my father's debts and he's in his grave. And then suddenly kills her off after only 30 minutes. <laughs> and the rest of the film becomes something completely different. Almost like a character was pointless, right? It's not revolutionary, but it's still rare to see. And of course the difference is that Mike Tyson Mysteries plays a misdirection for a comedic effect. What's wrong with it? Jesus! <laughs> So not only do you never know what the next episode is going to be, Thank you lady, be free! You're also laughing at some of the most ridiculous situations and the wildest of ideas. He gave us the signal, torpedo! 
Misdirection in the show goes hand in hand with the punchlines, with episodes often flowing from one joke to the next. So much to the point where the story comes from the gags and not the other way around. Guys, what about the mystery? Forget that mystery, young. I got my own mystery to solve. This is also exemplified by the stark differences in the four characters, whose conflicting personalities make for some interesting back and forth dynamics. Huh. I wonder why no one will come in her shop. Well, I'll c in her shop, all right. Uh, what does that even mean? It means I'll ejaculate all over a dirty little shop. Ugh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Their personality differences guide the direction of the humorous dialogue, just like the storyline is guided by the gags. No one's gonna disrupt the balance of nature on my watch. But let's talk about Pigeon for a moment, because as much as every single character in the show finds him repulsive... I'm not even wearing a skirt, you idiot. Well, when you do, I'll be ready. Well, that is everyone except for these guys. Fine, then we'll have Dad move in with you. Oh, because with three kids and a marriage that's hanging on by a thread, I don't have enough on my plate? Yeah, I'll put something on your plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Pigeon is the king of snappy and punchy jokes that fit perfectly with the show's offbeat style of humor. Well, what I can't believe is that young he let me pay for her yogurt, but then won't let me play with her tits. He's the most pivotal character for getting a laugh and is crucial to why the show works. Oh, hello, Deezy. Hey, how's the shithead business going? Suck my d Pigeon. The character is also voiced by comedian Norm MacDonald, who, like Pigeon, has a unique style and delivery to his jokes, sometimes even before he begins one. The driver we said to pick you up told you a joke. Yeah. And you're going to tell it now on the show. Yeah, that's how I get a lot of my material. <laughs> okay. Why don't we just have him on next time? Uh, that guy. <laughs> you, yeah, that guy. No, wait till you hear me do it. <laughs> but when he does so, there's an odd nature in the way he guides you through the joke, almost like it's a story that he himself is uncertain about. He says, Doc. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a spider, even though I'm a moth just barely hanging on to my web with an everlasting fire underneath me. And the punchline is often unexpected. And so the, moss, the, the doctor says, Moth, man, you're troubled. But you should be seeing a psychiatrist. Why on earth did you come here? And then the moth said, because the light was on. <laughs> He's also one comedian who generally doesn't pander to the audience and isn't afraid to tell jokes that might make them feel awkward. 130 years after the Civil War, the state of Mississippi has finally voted to abolish slavery. Representatives say they would have liked to have done it sooner, but uh, they were delayed due to some awfully big cotton crops. They had to... had some... some kind of big cotton thing. All right. Pigeon is essentially an extension of Norm Macdonald's stand-up persona, as we often see his character making a joke on the events in an episode. Hmm, black guy, gay guy, and a Chinese girl get into a cab. <laughs> it's like the start of a joke. Black guy says he forgot his wallet. Gay guy says he didn't bring his wallet because he assumed the black guy was paying because he thought they were on a date. Chinese girl just keeps saying, me so horny. <laughs> I know. No, it needs a rabbi. It's the perfect marriage between voice and character, with Pigeon's personality being well suited to the comedic style of Norm MacDonald. Yeah. Okay, well, I gotta go, DZ, because I don't want to talk to you anymore. Pigeon also raises an interesting aspect about the show's humor, and a fundamental theory behind why it works. What? How is that happening here? Don't get hung up on the logic, just enjoy it. It's fun. We're having fun. So long as it's having fun, the show doesn't need to make sense, which works well with the misdirection of episodes because it helps the story flow from one gag to the next. We both enjoyed pretty rough sex, so I didn't think anything of it at the time. But it looks like I'm a vampire too. There's no need for reasoning in between, because the focus isn't on how the joke was formed, but rather on the hilarious end result. Oh, I guess the other antidote is true. <gasps> oh! <gasps> well, at least that nightmare is over. Now who wants to go celebrate at Nona's Pie House? Having no logic also means the humor doesn't come from sensible and realistic encounters, which is something like Seinfeld is often great at pointing out. So you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. Anybody can just take them. But rather, Mike Tyson Mysteries has a humor that stems from nonsensical and impractical situations, most of which is only possible with a format like animation. Hold up, hold up. Are you saying I'm not an astronaut killing machine? If anything, you're an astronomer killing machine. <laughs> Lack of logic once again creates a feeling of pointlessness, and it reminds me of Jack Black in the movie School of Rock, who said, 
rock got no reason, rock got no rhyme. Because there's no real sense of purpose for what the episodes are going to be, and one moment they could be trying to help someone lose weight. What is that? It's a cake sandwich. Then the next I've accidentally exposed a darker secret. <laughs> what the f Things just happen and you move on. I told you, you should have him. This also means the jokes can come from unexpected places, which again fits perfectly with the element of misdirection. Happy birthday, mother. <gasps> the show builds upon this idea by often finishing episodes in unexpected ways, sometimes without a satisfying conclusion, or even just letting the mysteries remain unresolved. Well, there's obviously a lot more to the story. Not necessarily. This just might be where the story ends. Unsatisfying, unresolved, disturbing. Episodes aren't afraid to let the conflicts go unaddressed, which again echoes a feeling of pointlessness, because why would the show raise any conflicts in the first place if the story isn't going to address them later on? I can't tell if you're being serious, but for some reason I believe you, you're selling it. For me, the show can do so because the mysteries are just a vehicle for the laughter and don't necessarily need to have a resolution that would meet my expectation, so long as it still manages to be hilarious. How am I supposed to turn on the AC without the car keys, you dumb bitch? Mike Tyson Mysteries feels pointless because of misdirection, the abandonment of logic, and the disregard of a satisfying conclusion, but they're not the reason why the show works. What? The show works because of the great humor, to sell the feeling of pointlessness in the episodes. And just like the character Pigeon, if you take that aspect away, then all that's left is just a bizarre, pointless, and unfunny television show. I'm a sex addict. Doing well. Oh my god! Did everybody see that? <laughs> okay, last one. I'm not looking. Look at look at my eyes. I'm not looking at anything. What? Take your body, hold on. Look what you did. I'm a Shaolin monk. I'm telling you, did I come in here and tell you I was a Shaolin monk? All actuality, this is my silver. That I love. I just love its color. It's not necessarily the best fly in the fastest time, but it's just a bird that I'm a, you know, have an affinity with. I'm attracted to. I like the, I love the stature, and um, it's just the color. I'm a color guy. I like the colors in the birds. This is, I think, is a stunning color. If you, you know, I'm sure many people will agree. When, when the racing business, people just want the birds at the fastest time, the best. But the, the guy that's always the fastest time doesn't always fascinate me. He's just the winner. Of course, we have plenty of winners, but this one's the winner to me because he never gives up and he's just um, a beautiful looking bird, you know? And I guess um, I'm pretty shallow like most of society. I like looks as well as performance and she looks beautiful. <laughs>